Hello, beautiful. So have you heard the news? I had my website totally redone and updated. And what I really like about it is that it's user-friendly. You can find things with greater ease there. There was so much on the website that it was kind of hard to find in the past, and now it's really streamlined. I now have a shop page, so I'm putting my favorite products and my favorite things on this page. Some of the products are free. Some of the products have a discount code that you can use if you are interested in trying any of them. Also, you will see now that it's so streamlined and grouped all the programs that I offer. So if you're wanting more help in a certain area, such as with drinking less or not at all, help with banishing belly fat, help with detoxing your body, help with intermittent fasting or healthy eating, you can see all of that now so clearly. And my one-on-one coaching program now has its own separate dedicated page, which you can learn all about how Working with me one on one works, what's all included in that container. And because I value transparency, I put all the pricing on my website. So none of that is not known because I think transparency is something you really want to evaluate when you're deciding between what program you want or what would work best for you and your budget. So please check that out. Also, guess what? I have a new free guide on the website. So that is what we are going to be talking about today. And the free guide is all about dealing with setbacks. Your guide to mastering the art of resilience. And so when you look at the guide, and if you're watching me on video, I'm holding up the guide. It walks you through seven strategies that are essential when you have a setback. So first, let's talk about a setback, right? When we think about a setback, there's something that's wah-wah about it, disappointing. It's almost like the brain doesn't think that that setback should happen. And think about how we talk about setbacks. I fell off the rails. I spiraled down a rabbit hole. I didn't do what I was going to do or set out to do. I relapsed. I had a setback. I had a slip up. We call that so many different things. And I just think they're just a part of life. You know, when I think about anybody who's going on to achieve anything new in their life, of course, there's uncharted territory. Maybe you've tried weight to lose weight in the past, but you've never tried this method or this program or this way. And so now you're trying a new way or a different method for the first time. That's uncharted territory, right? You're not going to be able to have the know how ahead of time to know that it's going to work according to your plan. And if you think it's all planned out and you have this great master plan in place, guess what? You also might think that I have to do it with perfection. And we know life just doesn't work that way. So whether you are trying to run a half marathon, an Olympian, trying to open a new restaurant, write a book, lose weight, stop over drinking, any of these things where you have not maybe been successful yet, or maybe you're running a marathon again or writing another book, we know that there are going to be times that you have a bad day. And ultimately, that's what a setback is. I didn't do what I thought I was set out to do for today. And a lot of times we say, oh, that was a bad day. Today didn't go as planned, aka that's a bad day. I didn't write my 300 words. I didn't get out for the run that I was supposed to do for my training. I drank more than I should have. I just think setbacks are a part of life. They will always happen. (laughs) Because life isn't perfect. So I don't view setbacks as this want-want, heavy thing, shouldn't have happened. I should have seen it coming. I should have planned better. And should on all of ourselves like we like to do, I find it's like, oh, I got off course and now I just want to get back on course. And here's what I find. If you have a mentality where setback is almost expected, then you're able to navigate it better. Now, I'm also going to dive into the strategies, at least some of them that are talked about in this workbook. But I really want you to hear that setbacks 
is almost like normal life. It's a normal part of any journey. No matter what you're trying to accomplish, nothing in life goes perfectly. Or if it does, that's just the anomaly, right? That's not how life normally works. So when we do have that perfect day, that really is more of an anomaly than the norm. Because we know life, we have great days and we have not so great days. We have times where we're feeling all jazzed up, fired up motivated, determined. And there are days that maybe we have to push through that, or maybe we have to do it in spite of how we feel. Or maybe we just take a day off because maybe we just don't have the juice to do the thing. And I really want to redefine this because I think if we redefine a setback, you know what happens? A, we're not as hard on ourselves, And B, we get back on track so much quicker. So let's dive into a few of the strategies I listed in this guide. And I'm not going to go through all of them because this podcast would be really long, but you can read through them as this is a free guide. So strategy number one, I really wanted to place this as the first strategy because I find that this strategy alone, if executed appropriately, is very effective. Very effective, especially when you feel that uber stuckness, right? That ultra stuckness, or you're like completely deflated. Have you been there where you're just feeling like, oh, wow, I'm having a really bad day? And so you'll find in the guide that it says number one, question your limiting beliefs. So the harder you are on yourself, the more it's going to be harder to question those limiting beliefs, but the more important it becomes to question those limiting beliefs. So limiting beliefs are just anything that's holding you down or back, right? That's what a limiting belief is. You're not believing in the full potential that life has to offer. Your mind is almost like has a kink in it, right? It's like, oh, I can't go above this level. I can't go above this income level. I can't go above this way of thinking about my life because I'm just married to these limited beliefs. So one of the strategies underneath this first strategy, so one of the questions I love to ask myself when I am feeling defeated, feeling like I've had a setback, and I just have to tell you, I've had a ton of setbacks in the last two months a ton of things that have come up for me personally and professionally that have derailed me. And so I'm using these tools so I don't get even more derailed and stay stuck or stay down or stay off track. So one thing I like to ask when I'm questioning how I'm thinking about stuff, right, questioning those limiting beliefs, I just really like to ask this one question because it provides so much awareness, and so much movement in the question alone. I'll be asking, is that question true or is that thought true? So if I'm thinking, oh, this way of losing weight isn't working. Oh, I'm never going to lose this extra weight or I always keep failing. Like, I always keep failing. Is that true? No, it's not. There are Plenty of times. I could probably write 50 things that I've been super successful at, right? And super successful to me means like I set out to do one thing and I accomplished beyond that. Like I even surprised myself. And I'm sure you have this in your life too, where you set out to do one thing and then you're like, oh, but then I wanted more and accomplished that. But that wasn't my first goal, right? So am I going to fail at it all the time? Because that's what my brain says. You'll never win at this or you'll never get there. or You'll never lose that last 10 pounds. Is that really true? Is that really true? Because our brain loves to try to predict the future. And you know what? Our brain's not very good at that. Because <laughs> life happens, things evolve, things change, and we can't really predict the future. We don't have a crystal ball. You know, whatever we think is going to happen, like we're going to take this beautiful vacation in two months, but guess what? The flight could get canceled. Weather can happen. You know, things happen. So, of course, we can plan for it, 
but we are really not 100% always in charge of the outcome. We are in charge of the action steps we take each day, but we're not always 100% in charge of every outcome out there because we can't control the universe and we can't control others and we can't control the weather, right? There's so many things that are variables that are meant to be random and variables. They're not meant to be stagnant and things that we can control. And honestly, that adds like surprise and an element of us having to be able to pivot and adapt to our lives. Actually, it's beneficial for the human species to be adaptable and pivot and learn how to do that rather than consistently living the same way all the time. So I really love the question, are your thoughts true? And really evaluating if that's true. Of course, it'll feel so true in the moment. Your emotions will come in and be like, yes, that's so true. I am a complete failure. This will never work. But that's just your emotions talking. If we were to remove the emotional component of it, if you were to say this to your best friend or your mom or a significant other, like, I'm a failure, I'm never going to do it, would they see it the same way? Probably not. They're probably going to say, oh, wait, you tried two things and it didn't work out in two days. I hardly count that as failure, right? So really start questioning your own limiting beliefs. Now, if you have a coach, they help you through this. They walk you through this. I'm guessing, I guess all coaches do that. I do that. So that's why I'm saying coaches do this. But really, if they are really good at their craft, they will be questioning those limiting beliefs. And it's really helpful to get a different perspective because sometimes we are so close to the problem and so close to the issue or super emotional about the problem or super emotional about the issue. And of course, when the amygdala is going on and on and on about its own emotional stuff, our logic brain, our prefrontal cortex is not really on board. It's the amygdala brain that's like running the show. So it's really nice to get that outside perspective. It's really nice to call a friend, really nice to call one of your cheerleaders, one of your advocates, somebody who lifts you up so that you can see that maybe you're just operating under a limiting belief. And when you start changing that belief and questioning it and seeing it not as true, I love it because then it opens the door for other thoughts to come in, for other beliefs to come in like, oh yeah, that is just one perspective. But what if I could still be successful? I just haven't gotten there yet. I'm still on the journey there. And here's another thing to think about or another way to think about it. So I love questioning your limiting beliefs. I use this strategy all the time. I want you to hear me that I say I use that all the time because I think we can look to others or look at others and say, oh, their life is together. They have it together. Oh, this just must be so automatic for them. But this is still a practice that I have to remind myself to do because, of course, my amygdala will say, let's just cry about this. Let's just, you know, have a hissy fit and a temper tantrum over it and stay with the emotions. And I may do that for a period of time. But then over time, it's like, I'm sick of these emotions. I don't want my amygdala. <laughs> it's, not, it's not working out for where I want to go. I have big goals and I like my big goals. And I want to change. And I like that I want to change because I know staying the same is not where I want to be. I like it here, but I really will like it better, I think, over there. So let me go try over there and see if I'll like it better. I can always come back to here. And so I love questioning my limiting beliefs when I'm feeling really stuck or set back. And I think a key piece of this, as you'll read too, right, really challenge the thoughts. Because they're going to feel so true. They're going to feel so true. And, it, and sometimes our feelings are helpful. And sometimes they're not. Right? Have you thought of times in your life where your feelings that you're like, oh, I feel into this. This is so right. I'm taking this job. Or I'm feeling into this. And this feels like the next right step for me. And you do it. And it turns out great. And then there are other times you're having these feelings. And you're just like, I don't want them. I don't want to be a part of these anymore. <laughs> I want to overcome. And so you can overcome. And just really looking at what is the mindset that's bringing up these feelings or aggravating these feelings. Really question that mindset and those limiting beliefs. Ask yourself if they're based on reality or if they're just limiting beliefs that you picked up from somebody else. You know, like 
people feed us our limiting beliefs. Maybe we learned in childhood that we're not good at art, or we learned that from an art teacher, or we learned that we're not good at something, or somebody made a snide comment in the past, and we adapted that as true. But is it really true? Or is it just your art didn't meet her expectation or his expectation? Or she was having a bad day and just took it out on you? Or was it about something else? And (laughs) your art in one grade versus later on in life can completely change and evolve for better or for worse, right? So, and it's also a skill you could develop. There's books to teach you and ways to do it. And the more you practice, right, the better at things most people become. So really challenging where you picked that thought up to, like, where did I pick this up about myself? Like a common one for a lot of women is I'm not enough. Where did we pick that up? We are terribly enough. We are here. We are created. We beat the odds to get here. Do you know to be born is like a minutia of a percent? It's like so small to be born, right? The egg, the sperm, they have to meet. They have to be in the right time in the month, la, la, la. You have to go through a healthy pregnancy. And just the miracle of being born You've escaped so many odds. (laughs) And if you're still on this planet, how many years have I escaped the odds of being off the planet or not part of the planet, right? Like, just think about the miracle every day. All the car accidents I avoided and other things that could have gone wrong. And there were some close calls along the way that I've had. (laughs) Some trips to the emergency department where it didn't look so good. And I beat the odds. Like, I'm a miracle walking, as are you. We surely are enough, absolutely enough. And so really questioning if you're thinking you're not enough or thinking anything less than, where did you pick that up? Did it society groom that in you somehow or somebody give you that thought along the way and you just accepted it as truth and never really questioned it for yourself? So I'm spending a lot of time on this because I want you to see the value you can get in this one strategy. You can get so much value from just one strategy. And I didn't give you just one, I gave you seven. So I myself get so much value out of questioning my limiting beliefs. There are great books on this topic and really understanding how your brain picked up this stuff. Isn't it interesting to note that when we are born, we're just pure consciousness. All we want to do is be loved and eat and cared for, right? We don't have thoughts. We have to learn how to walk. We have to learn how to eat. We have to learn what's socially acceptable. Maybe farting is not socially acceptable or burping, right? We have to learn to say please and thank you. We have to learn how to be a contributing member of society. Like all of that is learned. You don't come out of the womb knowing this. Addictions are learned, right? We learn and we operate because maybe we turn to alcohol for comfort and it worked. And so we keep believing that it's always going to work and it's always the solution. And maybe our brain now needs to learn that it's safe to let it go. That we're safe. We don't need it anymore. Maybe food became an obsession because, oh, that's how I felt good about myself. Or the chemicals that come along with highly processed food work on my brain where it overtakes my brain, hijacks my brain, and then all of a sudden I feel at a loss and I lose my willpower. Yes, because that's biologically true of how food affects us physiologically, right? That's not you having a problem. It's the food creating the problem within your biology that's just manifesting, right? And it was maybe designed that way on purpose. So the companies keep making more, selling more, and we keep buying it. So I really love this first part, which is questioning your limiting beliefs. All right, number two, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on as well. Reflect and refrain your missteps. So we have a goof. We feel like we backtracked. We feel like we slipped up. We feel like, oh, I drank and I didn't want to drink. I said I wasn't going to drink and I drank. I said I wasn't going to do this much sugar and here I am, my hands in the cookie jar, right? 
whatever your proverbial thing is that you feel you slipped up on. Maybe you said, I'm going to start my exercise routine, and then you haven't gone for four days, and now you're just like, what's the point? How can you reflect on that tripping point and reframe it in a way that you learn from it? Hmm. Well, I realized my hand started in the cookie jar because there was a work conflict, and I feel partly responsible or I don't like conflict. And my body feels this energy inside of myself, and I don't like that. And I'm not, makes me not happy with the work or the work I'm doing. And so here I am, numbing out and trying to just buffer my feelings and turn them off or shut them down or turn them down or turn them into good feelings because I'm having bad feelings. So what can I learn about that? What can I learn about myself having these feelings that are, wait, normal? Because not many people love conflict. Some people do, but not many people do. And what can I learn about that? And how can I reframe it that, oh, should this happen again? Because a lot of times, overeating, overdrinking, right? They might be on a cyclic pattern in our life. What's driving that? And what is driving that is the root cause. So what is off in my life? That really more cookies or more alcohol is really not going to fix. So can we look at what went wrong and reframe it and say, ah, the next time this happens, I want to become more emotionally resilient. I want to get to understand my emotions. This is why we talk a lot about emotions inside of my group membership program. We're really getting to the root of, oh, These uncomfortable emotions, if we don't process them, they could be grief, right? If we don't process them, they continue to haunt us. And if we just allow them to be there, that haunting gets less and less and less over time. And they don't feel so big and powerful and they're like so loud and you need to do something about it right away and give me the cookies, give me the Chardonnay, just storm the refrigerator like I used to do. And it's like, oh, how can I ease into this, look at what's truly causing me to have this behavior and really understand it and reframe it in a way that's like, wow, that happened for me. Yeah, I slipped up. And you know what I learned about that? I learned that, wow, I don't really handle anger with my daughter well. Huh. Why does she anger me so much? Why do I get so angry? What am I thinking? about her or about me that's causing me to do this behavior that I really don't want to be doing. (laughs) So I really love like, oh, what did I learn from that? I learned that I really need to have more control over my anger because I'm lashing out and then I'm taking it out on the wine bottle and then I'm poisoning myself with all this wine, too much wine. It's not even making me feel good. And then I don't recall the night like, ugh. It just keeps steamrolling, right? And so how can we look at where we went wrong or where we feel we went wrong? And we can say, oh, that happened to me. That happened for me. Instead of that happened to me. Yeah, so that happened for me because I'm learning something about this and learning where I need to spend a little more time understanding myself and other ways to cope, potentially. So I love reflect and reframe, easy for me to say, on missteps because they truly are a learning opportunity. And this is why inside the Drink Less Lifestyle program, inside my group coaching program, I'm talking about these worksheets that ask you pinpointed questions. So when you do have a setback, a slip up, a relapse, whatever you want to call it, go off the rails, get off track, that it turns into a learning point rather than a self-flagellation point, right? Like, oh, and then you just beat yourself up and then you wind up doing more of it and then you wind up getting further from your goal. Because we have goals and goals make us generally, most of the time, if we have the right mindset about it, makes us excited. Because it's like, oh, I want that in my life or I want to manifest that in my life or I want to bring this into my life or I want to achieve this. This would be so cool to do or to have or to experience. And generally, so our goals motivate us 
again, with the right mindset, because <laughs> I've heard some women come and I'm like, oh, the goal of losing weight. And it sounds like so arduous and so hard. And thinking of it that way just makes it so much more arduous, so much more difficult to actually do. When if we just strip it of that nature, maybe we'll find that it's not super difficult. Yeah, it's challenging, but it, we're not adding layers of emotion on top of it that we don't want to be there. So it can be easy. It can be simple. And we can execute and take those action steps without having to add excess negative drama. So I love reflect and reframe your missteps. Okay, number three. This is all for myself and fellow recovering perfectionists and perfectionists out there. It's that take imperfect action. I did a whole podcast on this. Ah, oh, because we think it has to look a certain way. We have to do it a certain way. It has to be the right amount of time for it to happen and look like it's almost like a wedding day, right? We have the perfect day planned how it's going to go, whether it's, you know, we're getting a workout in or, hey, after work, I'm going to do yoga and I'm not going to hit the wine bottle and then I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And we have it all laid out and all mapped out. And then life happens and then our emotions come flooding in. And then, you know, somebody gets sick in the household and we're just like, oh, it wasn't supposed to go like this. So what do we do as perfectionists and recovering perfectionists, right? If we're still suffering with that, we just throw in the towel. We're just like, all right, I'm done. Instead of doing a modified plan, a smaller version of the plan, and this is where I love like tiny habits, right? Just doing some action, even though it doesn't meet your standard. It's not your highest performance. It's not like the creme de la creme. I got in a whole 50-minute workout or a whole hour and 15-minute yoga session in, <laughs> and I came out fully sweaty, and it was the bomb, right? If we could just say like, okay, I didn't feel up for that, but what can I do? What tiny action can I do? Can I do a 15-minute walk? And that's going to utilize some of my glucose, put it into my muscles. It's going to help me feel like I'm still on track. Although it wasn't perfection, I still took some imperfect action towards my goal. And that leads into number five, is that you got to celebrate it. You got to celebrate progress over perfection. Because my friends, what we know about life is it doesn't go perfectly all the time. There are days where it does. And honor those, love on those, celebrate those. It's awesome. But also you can celebrate when it's not perfect. You can celebrate that you just made some progress. Because when you're taking just imperfect action, you're going to notice that your identity starts to change. You're like, yeah, it's raining outside, but I got a 10-minute walk-in. Yeah, I just took an umbrella this time. Usually the rain would have kept me inside the house or whatever. But when you start taking that small imperfect action, when times you would have like tapped out or not done it, you're going to start to see your identity shift and how you see yourself is everything. If you see yourself and think of yourself as enough, you'll act as enough. You'll be as enough. If you think about yourself as like, yeah, I'm getting it done no matter what and in no matter what capacity, you're going to put some small effort into it each and every day and celebrate it. It's not a reason to beat yourself up because we know perfection doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't always have to go the way we have it mapped out. And maybe somebody above us and higher than us knows how it's mapped out. And we just got to follow the plan. We got to go with the flow. We got to learn to pivot and adapt and adjust. And doesn't that make us more resilient and stronger? Right? I think about, you know, Navy SEALs or anybody fighting wars. I'm sure it doesn't go according to plan. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of things that happen along the way that they wasn't expecting. And they have to pivot because if they don't, there's more chaos that ensues. There's more lives that are lost. There's more things that can go wrong. And so in our own life, I think it's so great sometimes when we get challenges, right? Because we learn to pivot and we learned that we can become more resilient and we can overcome. And then we go, oh, I didn't see that challenge. 
My husband showed up to the gym the other day and the treadmills were all full. He didn't see that challenge. You know why? When he usually goes at that time and that hour, they're not all full. It was a challenge. He had to pivot and adapt and he's not used to like, I need my treadmill. (laughs) I'm like, honey, there's other machines here. Or you can, instead of start with the treadmill, you can end with the treadmill or you could put the treadmill in the middle, right? We get so perfectionistic or set in our ways that it has to look a certain way. And when we can pivot and be flexible, that's what's going to make us resilient. And so number four, not take 100% personal responsibility of the things that you can control, right? You can't control everything. And so we don't want to take over responsibility. That is something we're working on right now, actually, in the group coaching is that there are some women taking over responsibility in their life for kids and husbands and the things and If we take over responsibility, right, that's going to set us up to be micromanaging people, thinking that we have to parent our spouse, which they don't like that. I don't like being parented by my spouse. I can't imagine if I parented my spouse, he would like that. And so we got to watch. We're like, whoa, I'm taking on too much responsibility here. I just need to own me. And quite frankly, that's hard enough. And that is enough. Right? And let the rest go in terms of controlling, right? We can influence. I'm a big fan of influencing others, particularly for them to have their best life and to live their best life. And I really want to be a champion and a cheerleader for the women in my life, the man in my life, the child in my life, right? That's who I want to be. That's my desired self. Am I always that way? Of course not. Not perfect. But that is always top of mind for me is that I want to be a champion for others to get the life that they want, to own the habits that they want to own, to let go of old programming that they want to let go of, to burn down old habits that are no longer serving their life. Maybe it served their life in one facet, but now they are just done, ready to move on from that, right? And being the biggest champion for yourself is a whole nother level. And can you do that? by taking 100% responsibility for yourself, not for others, for yourself. And that, to me, is 100% awesome because that means I'm designing my life and I'm living it the way I'm choosing to live it, not on default, but with intention. And when you learn to look at your life like that and a setback, it's like, okay, where did I go wrong in this? Where did I make a choice that didn't align with my values or what was important to me or my highest priorities? How can I take 100% responsibility of that? Therefore, I'm not putting it out onto others like, oh, my daughter shouldn't have got sick. This shouldn't have happened. Work went through a restructuring. That shouldn't have happened. And now I have a new boss or a new manager or a new line of work, and, and that shouldn't have happened. I'm blaming others. Rather than saying, oh, okay, I could see this as a setback and I could do the work to make sure that I'm still on track towards my goals. And that could be gainfully employed. That could be still going to the gym or still getting in some healthy eating despite chaos going on around me, right? If we blame others, we lose our ability to stay in that 100% responsibility for our actions and how we are showing up in the world. And that one is really hard to do without overdoing it, right? So stay in our lane, make sure we have those bumpers up, right? Like on a bowling lane, right? Their alley is their alley, our alley is our alley, and we focus on that and take 100% responsibility. Okay, this didn't work out. What can I do and what did I learn? So that when I try it again, I may be more successful the next time. All right, my friends, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. I hope you've enjoyed a lot of the learnings that are in this workbook. I'd love to get your feedback on this guide. If you want to join my new free Facebook group called Health Habits and Epic Living, come join the discussion over there. I'd love to hear if you have strategies that are different than the ones here. And we can talk about those and see. So we're all lifting each other up to be resilient and getting towards the goals that we want. All right, my friend, I will see you next time.